If you ask me to make a list of bands that I think are tragically overlooked, it would be a pretty long list, but Cardiacs would sit at the top of it. Not just because their music is superb, a massive cut above most of their contemporaries in the 80s and 90s, but also because of their history of bravery, variety and individuality. This is a band cited as an influence by acts as diverse as Radiohead, Blur, Super Furry Animals, Napalm Death and Mike Patton. But despite this, their history contains an unusual amount of misfortune, culminating in a tragic ongoing situation that prompted me to make this video. But before I get into that, let me tell you a little bit more about Cardiacs. I discovered this band when I was studying a Masters in Composition at the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland a few years ago. I was sitting with the head of the department, Gordon McPherson, speaking of talents that I think deserve to be better known, and we were listening to something I'd created as a joke, an interlude in a larger piece I was writing at the time. And when this was over, Gordon said, Hmm, sounds like Cardiacs. Who are they? You don't know Cardiacs. Uh, no, um, no, no, never heard of the Cardiacs. No, no, not the Cardiacs, just Cardiacs. So we launched YouTube and Gordon put on this. Now at this point I wasn't quite aware of how diverse Cardiacs were, and just assumed that their shtick was to dress like homeless clowns and play standard pop with zany instrumentation. But then around the second chorus, the moment where I usually begin to think, yeah, right, verse chorus, verse chorus, this song is basically winding down, it suddenly went on what I can only describe as a virtuoso compositional journey. Now, despite the mix of nutty instrumentation and ridiculous visuals, this is seriously well-written music. One of the hardest things to do in pop music is constantly change direction without breaking the sense of flow. And this sequence flows beautifully, the best you could hope for from one of the elite prog rock bands at the time, but delivered with casual disdain and a complete lack of self-importance. And the more I looked, the more there was on offer. Electrifying, fast-paced punk. catchy indie songs with complex harmonies. Synthy electro music. and whatever style you'd call this. And then there's what might be my favourite rock anthem of all time, a song called Dirty Boy, which if you do nothing else, you should listen to in full. In terms of genre, this band are impossible to nail down, an artistic freedom afforded them by owning their own label called the Alphabet Business Concern. But where independence gets you freedom, it's also a very hard road financially. I'll get back to this in a moment. Now, despite their wide variety of styles, it's actually pretty easy to identify Cardiacs by common elements in their musical vocabulary. First, they use a lot of whole tones, which often gives the effect of being in the Lydian mode, where the fourth of a major scale is sharpened. If we play that backwards from the fifth note, you have the vocal line in the song Odd Even. Then there's the use of what's called hemiola, exemplified in the chorus of the song Gibber and Twitch, where the music jumps between fitting six beats in a bar to only four in a bar. Be. 
And then there's what the blogger Dan Schmidt calls the cardiac cadence. A flat third followed by a minor fifth followed by a first. This progression is everywhere. One of the reasons this particular progression is so compelling is that it's not intuitively obvious what key we're in, which prevents the music from feeling like it's landed on a definitive home chord. And while studying this cadence, I noticed that those last two examples shared a chord in common, E major. In the song Odd Even, it serves as a first, whereas in Dirty Boy, it functions as a flat third. So I decided to try a little experiment. I linked these two cadences together and then extended it by imagining the first of Dirty Boy to be the flat third of a new sequence and then the first of that new sequence to be a flat third of yet another sequence. And at this point, we've looped back to the chord we started on. This is an extension of what's called a mode of limited transposition, championed by the composer Olivier Messiaen. The result is distinctively cardiac-y sounding, and it gives us a hint of how Tim Smith managed to write music that achieves such harmonic agility. Another notable thing about this band is their fiercely loyal fanbase. If you start looking into relevant social media groups or upcoming tribute events, you'll see what I mean. However, they've also provoked extreme dislike too. In 1984, they were asked by the band Marillion to join them on tour, a fantastic opportunity to boost their profile, but they had to pull out prematurely due to a violent reaction by Marillion fans who pelted them with bottles and other missiles on multiple occasions. Years later, when invited to support Blur, a band they'd heavily influenced, they were greeted with a similar level of antipathy from Blur fans. There have also been examples of very rough treatment in the press too. In 1987, the Sunday Sport, a tabloid rag, ran an article about Tim Smith and his wife Sarah Smith, claiming they were siblings engaging in an incestuous relationship. There were also claims that an editor of the publication NME deliberately blacklisted the band by refusing to mention them in a good light under any circumstances. Although I can't verify the story with certainty, I can only find one book that makes this claim along with a few examples of mean-spirited reviews. A particularly savage one by Jack O'Neill, summarised with the following words. Residing about as comfortable as Ian Paisley in the Vatican, cardiacs are the sound of both feet in the grave. How very clever and insightful, Jack. Cardiacs have also had some pretty bad luck too. In 1992, they signed a deal to distribute one of their albums through Rough Trade Records, who almost immediately afterwards announced bankruptcy, resulting in stores not being able to stock or order the album. This left Cardiacs owing thousands of pounds in recording costs. But the real tragedy of this band occurred just after Tim Smith had been to see a My Bloody Valentine concert in June 2008. On his way home, he suffered a massive cardiac arrest, leading to hypoxic brain damage before he could be revived. This severely limited his mobility, dexterity and speech, while causing him continuous physical pain. He's been in care ever since while his family and friends continue to raise funds in the hope of finding a medical or surgical option that would improve his condition. One of the main sources of funding for his care come from the sales of DVDs, CDs, vinyl and other merchandise available from their website, Cardiacs.net. If ever there was a reason to buy a physical copy of music, this is it. The experience of receiving packages from this site is quite unique and also kind of sweet since updates on orders are usually given by a person called Mary, who to my mind has become the unofficial mascot of the band. And if you're lucky, you might even get a little handwritten note too. This is where fans of Cardiacs have to be applauded, since they drive demand for the merchandise by constantly spreading word of mouth on social media. Even more impressive than this was their response to a donation campaign set up at the start of 2018 to pay for improved care for Tim, which, it was hoped, would help him to regain control of his body. The original figure set at £40,000 was passed within 24 hours, leading to it being raised to £100,000 to fund his treatment for a full year. As of this moment, the campaign has achieved 86% of this target. However, on the 15th of January, Mary posted on the Cardiac's website to let us know that Tim recently had to return to hospital. To quote one line, he is never without someone to advocate for him or to hold his hand from early morning until late night. This is quite a distressing thing to read and I can only wish Tim the very best and I hope he manages to achieve his goal of returning to a normal life. If you find that Cardiacs are to your taste and you want to help contribute towards Tim's donation campaign or just buy a record, I've put the relevant link in the video description below. Remember, even buying one of their records will go a long way. Tim Smith has left us with a broad catalogue of fantastic music that I think deserves more recognition than it currently gets. This is a man who forged his own path and inspired countless others to do the same. Personally, I'll always remember the first day I came across his work and wondered to myself, who is this absolute lunatic and where can I see more of him? Exit there. 
If you like my diatribe, subscribe!